Mr. Bill Whelan. Yeah, sit down and relax. Did you all have any idea that it would be so spectacularly successful, Mike? We were just really overwhelmed. I, I just can't tell you the feeling that we had at the end of that dance when the audience gave us that reception. I, I don't think anybody could have predicted it. Mm, uh, Jean? I agree. I mean, the feeling on stage was absolutely unprecedented and unexpected. Now, Bill, you were plotting this thing because you had to write the music. Did you have any idea? I mean, you wrote uh, an intermission act before, didn't you? Yes, we, uh, Donald Lunny and I did Time Dance in 1981, Pat. Yes, that's right, <laughs> on to Johnny Logan winning in The Hague. That's right. Uh, no, I mean, the, the response on the night, we'd seen it in rehearsal, and rehearsal was quite electric, but I think the response on the night, and I think Maya Doherty's instinct to do the whole thing live on the night, well, it meant that everyone was a little bit more nervous than they might have been, uh, I think the adrenaline that was added on the night really added to the performance. Yeah, because I, I was talking to Michael during the week before, and uh, I mean, you were going to give it in rehearsal about 30, 35 percent, I think you said, and then you were going to give it everything uh, on the night. It really was stunning. Um, how, how did you, I mean, I have to say this, you made Irish dancing sexy, the pair of you. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, it's normally more kind of upright and straight based. What's the secret, Michael? Well, I think there's, there's definitely two different uh, uh, ways to do Irish dancing. And, and competitive Irish dancing is, is taught to keep your arms at your sides, and it's a magnificent art form in and of itself. And what we've tried to do is to uh, branch out and be a little bit more progressive and to try and do something unusual and make it more marketable on a world uh, market. And uh, many of the dancers that dance in competitions, they put in maybe 10 or 15 years studying this art form and perfecting it. And uh, once they're done competing, there's really, there's not a lot they could do. They do a certain amount of shows, but I mean, um, I hope that this will open up some new markets for them to go on and continue dancing and to try new things. And how do you two know each other? I mean, how did you come together for this thing? Well, I think um, Moya Doherty is the person re most responsible for oh. our partnership, you might say, at the moment. We were both dancing at the Mayo 5000 concert last May. And Moya obviously saw a spark between us. We were dancing separately, and she saw us and said, there must be something here. So thank you, Moya. So as long <laughs> ago as that. And it was uh, Moya who actually came up with the idea. But Mavis Ascot is in our audience somewhere, and she, she actually is. choreographed the thing. <laughs> and uh, Mavis is there, yes? Yeah. yeah where actually, did Pat, can I just say that uh, the choreography was teamwork between Michael, Jean, myself, and my assistant, Belinda, here. Right, and then and you had a mass of dancers, a phalanx. Well, they wonderful. They were, they were from Skull Rinke E. Hay, or O'Shea. The O'Shea School, yes. Yeah. And th th there was just nothing that those kids couldn't do. They were fabulous. They were brilliant. Yeah. They worked so hard, too. Yeah. So, but it's the choreography that puts, as I say, the sex appeal into Irish dancing. Is it true that when Aren't they... they sexy? Yeah, no, but hang on. Is it true that when they ask you to do it, you said, oh, no, how am I going to do this? I know, yeah. I, I mean, I just... I thought Moya was having a joke with me, you know, originally. Um, but uh, I'm glad she asked me. I really am. I've never experienced anything like this throughout my career. This has been absolutely astounding. Yeah, I have to mention that the record is number one in yes. the parade. Straight <laughs> in at number one, Bill, congratulations to you. And uh, number two is Rock and Roll Kids. <coughs> I think so. <laughs> it's the first time in, on this show we've had the number one and the number two record in the charts on the same show on the same night. Uh, but mm. th that's terrific. And it's going to be uh, released all over Europe, Bill. Is that, is that so? Yeah. Can I just say, Pat, I mean, w with regard to the record, it was great for us to, to be able to, to do the record. And, uh, you know, we, um, with RTE and, uh, and Sun Records involved and with some help from Church in General, for which we're very grateful. But we've now, we've now heard that as a result of the sort of success, uh, here, we're going to be released in the UK on the 23rd of May, uh, and uh, perhaps throughout Europe after that, so we're, we're hoping. Okay. But Brennan Graham mm. is still talking to us. He's still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, just the whole question of American uh, Irish dancing. Um, your, your background, Jean, you're Irish-American. Yes. Dancing from what age? The age of four. I started a classical training at the age of four and in ballet and tap for two years. And I have to say, once I started Irish dancing, I had to give up the rest of it because Irish dancing was just much more fun. It suited me, so. 
Yeah. It seems to be more vital in America than it is here. Now, maybe that's a misapprehension on my part, but we had the Trinity dancers from Chicago on this show uh, a few weeks ago, and they blew us away. I mean, they were just so good. They were here for the, the mm -hmm. World Championships. So is it more vital over there, do you think, Michael? Well, I think that um, uh, Irish Americans are very proud of their heritage. And when you're, you're so far away from the motherland, I guess you might say that uh, it's very important to do something that brings you back and holds you to your roots. So in a way, yes, it is. I'd have to say it is. Yeah. I should tell people, I mean, we've read about you having the world record for the maximum number of taps per second, which is standing at what? 28. 28 taps per second when he's tap dancing, which is unbelievable. But you also have a whole pile of other credits to your, you, you remember Mensa? Go on, tell us what else you are. No, I, I You're a boxer. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I've tried a few different things and I've had a, a certain amount of success in many different areas but I have to say that my first love is, is dancing and acting in the stage and it always will be. He's got the golden gloves you see for, for boxing and uh, you play the flute? Yes, yeah. He's a multi-talented fellow. Yeah. So you two are going to stay together, are you, for a while? Jean? I think um, from the success of Riverdance we hope to actually work together on another project or so. Um, I think it'd be a shame not to, but as of the immediate future, we're not sure what's happening. Because you've yet. got exams at the moment, haven't you? I do have exams, yes, which are a priority for me at the moment to get back and finish as soon as I can. Okay, well, we're grateful to you for staying over just a little while longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael, thank you very much. Jean, thank you very much. And Bill, thank you very much. And you'd all like to see the reprise, I presume? Oh, but yes. <laughs> I think the whole country is waiting for this to see, was it really as good? as we thought it was last Saturday night. I've seen it several times, and every time it really knocks me for six. So here it is, River Dance, from a concept by Moya Doherty. Um, it features the dancers uh, from Skull Rinka E. Hay, and also the voices of Anuna, and of course uh, the orchestra. The thing was written by Bill Whelan and choreographed uh, by Mavis Ascot, featuring lead dancers Jean Butler and Michael Flatley. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the reprise of River Dance.